Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Afghan Cooks. I'm Miriam. I'm the Afghan who cooks. Today we are making something called naan ishirin. It is literally sweet bread. And so this is an Afghan fluffy, sweet, enriched dough sweet bread. This is something that is cooked all throughout Afghanistan. Let's make it. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about before we get into the recipe, but we will get into the recipe, is how we food creators, recipe creators, make recipes. And one of the ways we do it is we test, we get inspiration, we look at other people's work, we look at cookbooks, we look at videos, and then we try out a variety of things until we find something that works for us. This is my second or third notebook. I am old, so I still write everything by hand. And this is actually the recipe. Oh, no, that's the sweet cardamom saffron and raisin milk bread. We will also have a video for. Let's see. Oh, Nani Shidin. So this is the end result of the experimentation um, and what works for me. Now, you will get the absolute final in the cookbook called Arman that I have been working on. In the bowl of my stand mixer, I have five cups of flour. This is all purpose flour. This is a sweet bread. So it, it's not like a healthy rustic country bread or even like a regular, like a rogani bread or um, any other sort of naan, right? This is a sweet, fluffy, light bread. So you don't want whole wheat in this, okay? You can do this by hand. I just got a brand new pink KitchenAid stand mixer, so I'm going to use that. But five cups, it's 620 grams. I'm going to put that aside. So I just wanted to show you that we have that. Look at this giant dough hook, isn't it huge? In this bowl, I have one tablespoon of sugar. Now, mind you, people ask all the time, oh, khala, do I have to add sugar to my bread? Can I leave it out? Sure, you can leave the sugar out, but ultimately yeast, loves sugar, it makes it work faster, the yeast is happier, yeast is a living thing, it needs to eat, it likes to eat sugar. And to my one tablespoon of sugar, I'm going to add one and one half tablespoon of yeast, warm milk, this is 2% milk, feel free to use any sort of milk or milk product that you want. Whole milk is obviously going to give you a richer taste, and I'm going to add a quarter of a cup, which is four tablespoons of this warm milk. I'm gonna stir that up. And we do this for a couple of reasons. One, it gives the yeast a little bit of a head start. It gets starts working so that you don't have to sit it to proof for as long. Number two, if you haven't made bread in a while, it's good to know if your yeast is still alive. If your liquid is too cold, your milk or your water, or whatever you're using, the yeast is not gonna go anywhere. Yeast does not like it to be too cold. And if it's too hot, you're gonna kill it too. So yeast likes your body temperature. I keep my yeast in the fridge because I don't want it to do anything. I want it to be cold. And then when I'm ready to use it, I put it in a warm liquid and now we can just watch it grow. We're getting some bubbles and we're gonna leave that for about five minutes. Now you can see our stuff is good and frothy. Our yeast is alive. It's alive, it's alive. <clears throat> we're gonna add it to our flour. And here I have a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. You can use butter if you want, avocado oil, I don't care. This is an enriched bread, so it just needs good amount of fat. A quarter of a cup of sugar. You can add more if you want. Remember, this is naan ishidin. It's a sweet bread. It needs to have at least a quarter of a cup of sugar. And then we add our milk. This is now one and a quarter cup. Yeah, one and a quarter cup of milk one and a half teaspoon of salt and two eggs. This recipe is more or less the basis of a lot of sweet bread enriched dough recipes. So similar to a lot of donuts or cinnamon rolls, things like that. I'm just gonna get this started in here. Phew. We'll put our dough hook on there. Now we're gonna let this go for about seven minutes. It looks really wet right now, but wait and see. Now I had to add a little more flour to that because I clearly miscalculated when I got my ingredients ready. I don't normally 
get my ingredients ready in advance like that for baking just because I know sometimes I'll miscalculate. So we're going to take this out. I'm going to show you the texture. It's so nice and fluffy. I ended up only needing it for about four minutes. I didn't want to overdo it. Oh, that dough feels so nice. It's so soft and supple. If the dough is too wet, if the dough is too wet, do not be afraid of adding more flour. You can see just how pretty this dough is. I mean, it feels like, like a baby. Like if you were, like if your kids are grown up and you were sad because you didn't have a baby to hold and you wanted to have a baby, you could just like, like, oh, is that weird? Na -na -ni -na -ni, na -na -ni -na -ni. Okay, now we're gonna put it into this pan. That's a bowl. And take a plastic bag and let it sit for about two hours until it's doubled in size. So this dough has been rising for quite a while now. It might be longer than two hours. I have here these uh, round, they're like pizza pans. I put some parchment paper on them. If you don't have parchment paper, just put some oil on the bottom of your pan. I may end up putting oil on the bottom of the pan anyway, because I may take the parchment paper off. Who knows, we'll see what happens. Here I have an egg wash. This is just egg and a little milk, stir together. Make sure you get all of the white clumpies out. Flour to dust your work surface. Uh, black seeds, nigella seeds, because of course, oh, and I have um, my stamps. Hold on, I'm gonna show you this really cool thing that I got. I got these super cool, um, these are bread stamps. They are um, Uzbek bread stamps. I think they're called to check. And they're basically like nails um, that have been cut off into these really gorgeous designs. You can see that came right off so easily. Look at that, look at how beautiful that looks. The flower, even though this is not a surface that this will stick to. That's my oven. I have it preheating at four, three, I'm sorry, 350. We're gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna put this back in the bag so it doesn't dry out. And we're gonna take this and we're going to cut this in half as well. And then we're gonna take this and cut this in half. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna roll this out. This is the center of our bread. Get it as close to a circle as you can. Now you can see those are about the same length and now we are going to just start crossing them over. That's all, just cross them over. Whoops, don't break it like I just did. Take our egg wash. Take our egg wash and make sure we cover the whole thing because this is how we get that nice, beautiful golden brown color. And trust me, any part that doesn't have it, it will be spin. It'll be white. We're gonna put this in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. We're gonna check it at 20 minutes, okay? Your oven may run hotter, it may run colder. So check it at 20. If you need to turn it because your oven is uneven, that's fine too, okay? So let's put it in the oven for 20 minutes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, why not? You're already here. And it's so amazing how you've all helped this channel grow from you know, just a person who wanted to put something out there about Afghanistan that wasn't about war to, you know, almost 8,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you so much. Leave a comment. I'd love to know what your favorite bread is. If it's wonder, that's okay too. And um, hit the bell notification so you know every time we have a new video. Don't we want to show the inside of it? Don't we want to show anything about it? Don't we